Hi, I'm here to talk to you today about a revolutionary new type of weapon that I believe could cause humanitarian crisis throughout the planet if it's not stopped. And we have enough of those already, I believe. These are weapons that once launched, launched or activated, can go out there, track and select their own targets and kill them or apply violent force without any human intervention or human knowledge. Now imagine that. I'm talking about a machine that's been delegated with the decision about human life. It has no moral agency. It really doesn't understand anything about humans or humanity. No empathy, no sympathy, and certainly no moral responsibility to do the right thing. Now, I'm not talking here about some sort of fancy sci-fi Terminator. I'm told these look more or less like conventional tanks, fighter planes, fighter jet fighters, ships, submarines, and small drones armed. And they originated really from when the US, um, all their forces in the early 2000s, began talking about autonomy as a way of restoring their military advantage over everyone else. But of course, immediately there was a new arms race beginning with the US, Russia, China, Israel, Turkey, South Korea, Australia and the UK, among others, really hell bent on trying to develop these as quickly as they can. And I believe they've been trialed in Syria, according to a UN recent UN report. Now, when I first heard about these in 2007, my biggest concern as an AI and robotics professor was technical. I had run big robotics labs, AI labs, machine learning for many years and had done lots of large scale museum exhibits, including, I must say, in 2002, developing some autonomous drones. But I was really shocked because I could not see at the time how these could possibly, how anybody could guarantee compliance with international humanitarian law, the laws of war. I mean, how can you make these machines discriminate between combatants and non-combatants? I thought, these guys are crazy. How can machine make qualitative decisions? How can it proceduralize qualitative decisions into an algorithm? Well, you can't. How could it make proportionality decisions? How could it take precautions about the appropriateness of targets? I thought this was just, you know, some sort of madness. But I wasn't the only scientist who thought that. In the last couple of years, more than 5,000 AI researchers, including the leaders in the field and other scientists, have written to the UN and big AI companies saying these are not fit for purpose. AI is not good for war. It cannot be trusted in that sort of way. And it's quite unpredictable. That to me alone should make it, you know, show that it doesn't comply with the laws of war. But unfortunately for those really rushing to develop them, it fell on selectively deaf ears. Now, since we started the campaign to stop killer robots in 2013, We've been arguing the case at the CCW, but military thoughts have been evolving. Now the big thing is force multiplication. Nation states are developing swarms of tanks, ships, submarines and small armed drones. The idea, of course, is so that one person or a small team can unleash massive, massive force. And that makes it even harder to comply with IHL because you can't, you can't really, one person can't watch that many of these things. They're talking about using hundreds or thousands of them. Another argument has been that human decision making is too slow for the, for current conflict. Well, that can't be, that can't be right, can it? So it's getting so fast that you want to make it faster by developing high speed, machine speed attacks and decisions, and then having counter weapons that are even faster and so on. So that eventually you're going to have weapons that are going at such high speed that you can't stop them. 
And you wouldn't be able to stop them if they clashed with another swarm because the people who stopped them would lose. So what is this going to do for global security? Imagine the accidental wars that could be created. And it would also be much easier to go to war if you're not putting your forces out there. Now, after eight years at the CCW, there's beginning to, we're beginning to see a large consensus emerging about the importance of some form of human control. Though some are pushing that they don't even like hum, the word human control, like the US. But 35 countries, including China, are behind our call for a ban now. And that number is seen as growing. The International Committee from the Red Cross has also joined the call about a month ago and are pushing for a pro prohibition in certain types of autonomous weapons like anti-personnel autonomous weapons, um, autonomous weapons that are unpredictable and that every other kind should be, should be carefully regulated legally. Now, we could really do with New Zealand's help here. It would make all the difference. A number of countries are sitting in the fence because, especially European countries, because they don't want to annoy America and Russia. They want to keep them in there, but they're never going to convince them of anything. So it would really help if we had a great peace nation like New Zealand to help knock some of these people off the fence. I believe that with your help, we could rid the planet of these morally reprehensible automated killers. Thank you for listening.